Okay, let me just do it from scratch. Um, I think that's easier. <laughs> so your textbook might have a formula that's derived for this setup, which, you know, if you can look it up and use it and it makes sense, that's great. Uh, let me just do this properly. Uh, let's say I'm looking at it from scratch. I don't have any prior knowledge. The only thing I know is uh, my knowledge of mechanics and Newton's law of universal gravitation. That's really the only thing you need to work out any orbit questions. So in this setup, I have the Jupiter, which is going to act like the sun for its moons. And I have the moon Io that's orbiting Jupiter in some number of days. And the question is giving us the radius of the orbit um, and a period of uh, 1.707 days. Let's see here. Um, so it's asking, based upon this data, what is the mass of Jupiter? Okay. Um, it feels like it <laughs> should be able to work it out, so let's give it a try. So I still have G programmed into Sage Math, so I'm going to be using that. So I need an expression that... Um, involves the mass of Jupiter and will somehow involve the period. So I can see that mass of Jupiter will somehow come in in the Newton's law of universal gravitation expression. And in order to use this orbital period information, we'll have to involve some bit of kinematics. And I think uh, the thing that my first instinct goes to is, well, this is probably a circular motion. <laughs> so there's going to be some kind of centripetal acceleration. And cent one nice thing about centripetal acceleration is that it can be expressed in terms of other kinematical parameters without involving derivatives and whatnot. It's, uh, there's a formula that was derived very early in the semester, V squared over R. So you can relate centripetal acceleration to these kinematical parameters. And you can also relate the centripetal acceleration to dynamical parameters like the net force divided by mass. So let me write out this expression here, um, just the, this equation in a cleaned up version. So the net force here is going to be just the gravitational force or that. Uh, G times mass of Io times mass of Jupiter divided by distance squared and divided that by mass. Um, here, mass would be mass of Io that we are talking about. Divide this by mass of Io. And that acceleration should equal speed of Io squared divided by R, that's the distance D. Let's not <laughs> multiply uh, symbols that we don't need to. Let me cancel out some things that cancel out because I see mass of IO canceling out here, which is great because <laughs> I don't know it. It's not given and I don't want to look it up. Uh, looks like one factor of distance cancels out. Okay, so we have the V here that we can't use it directly. So we have to rewrite the speed, orbital speed of Io in terms of its period. So we do the same thing that we did in the other question, just using this relationship. Speed is distance per time. So we could say the speed that we have in the expression there is going to be distance, a circumference of a circular orbit, 2 pi times d, divided by time, ah, that would be the period. So plug that in here. Let's just write out what we get. Uh, 2 pi squared, so 4 pi squared times distance squared divided by period squared. OK. Oh, so I think, yeah, yeah. So in this expression, we were given the orbital distance, and we were given orbital period. So I think it's all going to work out. Let me just uh, write up the cleaned up version. Um, so I'll just uh, write this first, the cleaned up version. G times uh, mj divided by d is equal to the far right-hand side, 
4 pi squared times d squared over p squared. And what we are looking for is mass of Jupiter. So um, I solving for that, uh, solving for that, mass of Jupiter is equal to moving d over I have 4 pi squared the distance cubed divided by move g over g times period squared. Uh, let me plug in this number in the in um, not in sage math but in Wolfram Alpha because uh, um, Wolfram Alpha has this additional benefit of uh, being able to check the units. If I made any algebra mistake, it'll kind of show up in units being wrong. So, mass of Jupiter, which we could also <laughs> look up, but we are going to calculate 4 times pi squared times the distance that they gave us, 421, 200 kilometer cubed, divided by gravitational constant times the period, 1.707 days squared. So, if I made algebra mistake, you will see that in units being wrong. Okay, I think it's good. So everything is in, uh, yeah, that's correctly interpreted. So I'm getting resulting kilograms. That's good. You need of mass. <laughs> and this, that means there's a chance that this is, a, uh, there's no mistake. So so let's plug in these values. Um, so I'm not a fan of the format that they are requiring me to put it in, but let me not complain too much. I have one more question I need to work through. Because, you know, in my view, this is equivalent to this. And I feel like both should be accepted as correct answer. And it does not program that way. But it's fine. Uh, this is the standard the scientific notation that, um, yeah, whatever. It's just me. Yeah. Okay, next to and the final question. Uh, it says, um, do I need to? Okay, so this question asks, what is the uh, Schwarzschild radius? So this is a, um, so it's a bit of a, I guess, trivia, or it's something that you should remember from your reading. And uh, what it is, is when they say, Schubert's shield radius. What they are really asking for is the distance at which escape velocity is equal to uh, speed of light c. Um, that's I, I forget if that's how Schwarzschild radius was defined, but this equality, and this, if it, that's not the definition, that's how it happens to be correct. It's a sort of widely accepted distance where you can escape from a black hole. Um, so they give us the mass, mass of the 4 million solar masses. So you need to do what it amounts to is uh, you have to do escape velocity calculation. And if you have a formula memorized or able to look up somewhere, that's great. You are allowed to do that. Just <laughs> tell me that you're doing that. Um, you can also do the calculation pretty simply because escape velocity calculation, it's done by considering conservation of energy. So you are considering a setup like this. You have some large gravitational um, attractor there. We have something that is starting out at some distance r that's going to become our square shoulder radius. And it's uh, moving at some speed of v. And let's say it's moving directly away. So in this uh, snapshot here, it has uh, some amount of kinetic energy and potential energy. And we are going to think of uh, a future snapshot where it's gone very, very far away at a distance infinity away. At this point, um, we are going to consider the threshold scenario where its kinetic energy has barely gone to zero. So, and I guess its potential energy actually has gone to zero too if it's at infinite distance away. So when we are asking for escape velocity, the question is how much speed does it need to have so that when it's at infinite distance away, it could be at uh, zero velocity and it could be at infinite distance away. 
if it had a velocity less than that, then it would fall back down. If it had a velocity more than that, then it would have some kinetic energy left over. So since the final, um, final uh, total energy is equal to zero, the statement we need to start out with to set up the equation is to say the total energy at this snapshot here is equal to zero, same as our final total energy. And then we write out our expressions, um, assuming this is a massive thing. Um, so we say it's equal to one half mb squared, uh, not plus, but minus. The gravitational potential energy is minus g times product of the masses divided by the um, distance r. So I'm just writing this here, minus gravitational constant times mass of the object. So it's a small m, m, and the mass of the attractor, big M, divided by the distance itself, r. We want to say this is equal to zero. And when you look at it, you see that the small mass m cancels out. So whatever this mass is, it doesn't seem to have an effect on its uh, escape velocity. And we're just going to leave that there and not worry about special relativity for now. Um, so the formula for escape velocity says, um, so I'm just going to do this algebra in my head. Uh, or Actually, uh, let me not solve for v, but let me solve for r, distance r. So if this v is the escape velocity, then the r where it's starting out at is given as, um, do I want, you know, let me not, uh, there's a, some chance that I could do this entirely in my head, but I think I'm going to confuse a lot of people by doing this, so let me just write it out. The next step in algebra is by moving this over, which is g times big M over r. And to solve for this r, I need to multiply both sides by r. So this is what I need to do. Multiply both sides by r to move r to the numerator. And then I need to move everything over to the right-hand side. So I need to multiply by 2 over v squared. When I've done that, I will end up with r on the left-hand side, since that was the whole goal. And on the right hand side, I'll have 2gm divided by v squared. So this is the expression that relates the escape velocity to the uh, distance where something starts from an object exerting gravitational pull. Now, to turn this into expression for Schwarzschild radius, all you have to do is plug in speed of light c for the escape velocity. So let's do that. Um, it's giving me these numbers in um, terms of constants that I don't want to look up. <laughs> and the answer is going to be an astronomical unit. So let me do this calculation in Ofram Alpha as well, so that I don't have to look up those constants that I don't want to look up. So it's going to be two times uh, gravitational constant times um, the mass. Okay, so that's where I have to type in 4 million solar masses. And I think uh, Wolfram Alpha will interpret that correctly. Divide that by speed of light squared. And let's see what answers it gives, depending on what choices it gives me. Um, so that appears interpreted correctly. Okay. That's the distance. Do they tell us? Um, ah, okay, astronomical unit is one of the choices. So I'll say this in astronomical unit. It might have understood the AU as well. Um, yeah, okay, 0 0.079 AU. Huh, that's a lot smaller than I thought. Oh, all right, that's what it says the answer is. So this is, in some sense, the size of a black hole. And the size of the black hole is at least smaller than Earth orbit. Uh, I guess I've never done this calculation before. Uh, there's a black hole called uh, the, the, the notation for black hole. It's something that you can look up. It's a Sagittarius A uh, star. 
it's a radio source. <laughs> and uh, there are some softwares that will simulate the orbit of other stellar matter around this black hole. And I don't know, I had this impression that the black hole itself was bigger than that. But all right, it's really compact object.